Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. General Motors raises billions. Mitsubishi launches its newest model, a jet plane. And Buick's TV ads hit a home run. Let's get to the news because since emerging from bankruptcy five years ago, General Motors has impressively rebuilt its balance sheet. The company just raised $12.5 billion in what's called a revolving credit facility. That's just another way of saying it has a line of credit worth $12.5 billion that it can tap into anytime it wants. Even more impressive is that this is an unsecured line of credit, meaning the company did not have to put any collateral down. And just to show you how complicated it can be to raise this kind of money, 40 financial institutions from 14 countries participated in putting this deal together. Have you seen Buick's new TV ads? You know, the ones where the people are saying, that's not a Buick. Well, on an upcoming Autoline this week, the vice president of sales of the brand, Duncan Aldred, explains why Buick needed to come out with that kind of ad. But really, we needed to change that brand, and um, we tried various things, and it just occurred to me we're going to have to hit this one absolutely head on, smack between the eyes and just call out the issue that, that we know everybody's thinking. And we knew that from research, we knew it from talking to people, and that was that it had an old perception and a perception that it was an older person's brand. So we, we, uh, we gave the agency that challenge, and, and I have to say they came back and did it, I believe, in a very charming way. Uh, often when you're trying to almost call things out like that, it becomes polarizing and, and somewhat shocking, and some people like it, some people not. So I was delighted that we got a very charming execution of that, of that campaign. That episode of Autoline This Week premieres in a couple of weeks. Up until World War II, Japan was a major aircraft producer, with the Mitsubishi Zero being the country's most famous fighter. But after the war, the United States prohibited Japan from building aircraft. That forced aeronautic engineers to pursue careers in the automotive industry. But they always harbored a deep desire to build aircraft. And that's what motivated Honda to build its own corporate jet. And now Mitsubishi is coming out with a mid-sized commercial jet called the MRJ, which stands for Mitsubishi Regional Jet. You know, that reminds me of how a decade ago, the former CEO of Mitsubishi Motors America, Pierre Gagnon, started a sales campaign with 0% financing, zero money down, and zero payments for a year. I don't know who came up with it, but some wag started calling the campaign the Mitsubishi Zero. The sales campaign was a disaster, but at least we got a good line out of it. I'm sure most of us have heard that Ford secretly tested an aluminum paneled F-150 in the Baja 1000 ahead of the 2015 model announcement. So it comes as no surprise that the automaker will be showing off a pair of off-road inspired 2015 F-150s at SEMA. The first has a huge suspension lift with massive Mickey Thompson wheels and tires, while the other was made to handle both on and off-road duties with ease. Ford is hoping to once again snag the hottest truck award at this year's show. Why would you design a dual clutch transmission that uses a torque converter? That's coming up next. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. On last week's Autoline After Hours, we were joined by Matt Hargett, the former chief engineer of the all new Acura TLX and now chief engineer at Honda R&D. He gave us the reasons behind one of the exclusive technologies on that car, a dual clutch transmission that actually uses a torque converter. As I mentioned earlier, this car has to replace the outgoing TSX. One of the things we found that people love about the TSX, other than the fact it's you know, more compact and dynamic looking, is it feels peppy and zippy, right? So we wanted to enhance that even more and give it a more sporty character than even the, the V6 for, for the four-cylinder. And um, one way we did that was 
put this DCT on the car. So DCT inherently is more sporty, right? It feels sporty, it, it shifts quicker, it's fun to drive, but at lower speeds, a lot of DCTs have that uh, herky-jerky type motion around town. But obviously people in this segment don't want that in their vehicle, right? So we had to overcome that. So our solution was to use the torque converter. So what we do is we slip the torque converter at low speeds to, limp, to kind of give you that smooth launching feeling of an automatic transmission. But we also can multiply the torque. So at launch, we reach peak G almost a second faster than a conventional DCT. And uh, we can, even though the power to weight ratio is essentially the same as the outgoing TSX, it's one and a half seconds faster hmm. uh, than the TSX. And that's, a lot of that's due to this, the torque converter. So it gives us that smooth operation uh, at low speed, and it also multiplies the torque. Hey, we got another great Auto Line After Hours coming up this Thursday. Dave Parachek, the chief engineer on the new Mustang, will be in the studios. So join Gary Vasilash and me for some of the best insider discussions in the business. But that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.